Hi, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. Today is the release day for ProPresenter. The new update of version 17 has been released. There's also a bunch of new user account information and the new subscription model has officially dropped. So I've got two computers in front of me. This is the new version 17 update of ProPresenter and this is the version 16 of ProPresenter 7. So it's now not ProPresenter 7 anymore. Now it's just ProPresenter and we still have the version number. So I'm calling it ProPresenter version 17. Great. So I'm going to go ahead and open up ProPresenter. Let's go to settings and account, which is the first piece of information. On the old setup, I'm just going to go to settings, but account's not there, so I got to go to registration. And you can see over here on the old system that you can see our code. You can see the, who it's registered to, the device name, it ex the expiration date, all of that fun stuff. And over here, you can see the name of the computer, the amount of seats left, and you can activate and deactivate just like on the old system. And now if you click on manage account, it takes you to the browser because we don't actually have to type in that unlock code anymore. Amazing, right? There is now an entirely new backend for ProPresenter and it allows us, if I click on products, I can manage all of my ProPresenter licenses and things here. You can see as I scroll down all the devices that I have available that have been signed in through our license. This is what you're gonna see when you open up the new ProPresenter and it's gonna give you the option to sign into your account. No longer have to use that registration code. So I'm gonna go ahead and click out of here. And I'm gonna to go to settings on the old system and go to general. And then I'll go down a tab to general on the new ProPresenter 17. Okay, so I can see that things like the logos, the copyright information, I can activate and deactivate our CCLI reporting. And I can put that on whatever slide I want, the first, the last, the middle, all of them. Uh, you can select some support files and some different things. The, you can turn on and off the House of Worship integration, so it'll give you the Bibles or take those away. Let's get on to updates, and it's going to be the last tab on the old system. You can see here uh, if we want to check for updates, when we got our last update, just all the normal information that's all available on the new system and the old. But you can see here, it's very obvious that they've tried to make this new system look so much like Mac OS X. I love it. I hate it. I love it. I, hate, I don't know. I think it's cool. It's different. It's unique. Not unique. It's updated, it's different, it's fresh. It looks like Mac OS, which is probably the more professional thing to do. Let's get on the screens and I'll go back over to screens. On this page, everything basically lines up the exact same. The one thing I wanna notice, I've always wanted to make a YouTube video on this, but I've never come up with a good excuse to actually do it. Show performance statistics on screen. So if you ever get some numbers on the top of or bottom corner, one of the corners of your main output screen, or your stage output screen, this checkbox has probably gotten check marked. It's really annoying when it happens. Let's get down to audio. They changed up the order here a little bit. So you can see that everything's basically the same. Channel counts, uh, you've got your inspector, so how you're monitoring the audio files that you're playing back, your main output, and I've got my levels, my delay, all of that kind of stuff, and I've got my SDI and NDI settings right there. I'm gonna go to network now and see what is happening on this tab. It basically looks the same. Um, I can enable and disable network. I'm gonna see my IP address once I am on the network. I can use the network link. I can use the remote from here, the stage app from here. But at the bottom, we see something brand new, this enable TCP connection. This is a cool new networking thing, kind of a high-end function of the new ProPresenter. So let's do a video on that in the future because I don't really understand it completely. Moving on, let's go to inputs. Inputs, this is the page where we're gonna bring video and content into our computer, into ProPresenter that we want to display. So I created a second input there. So on video inputs and audio inputs, instead of having the tabs on the left side, we now have them across the top, and then each of them has a page. So video inputs, I can create a new input, and then I can select my source, select my device, and then I can select my audio device and I can uh, set the transition audio. I can do some stuff with NDI input discovery. But I believe this allows you to select specific IP addresses on the network to search for an NDI feed. The audio side of thing looks the exact same. So I'm gonna go down to devices and devices, this is where you set up devices to talk externally from ProPresenter to other places. Here I've got Rostalk set up because Rostalk is one of the things that's able to control the Stream Deck through BitFocus Companion. So that's kind of a really cool 
set up and I've got that going there. MIDI is also set up because I'm gonna be pulling in content so that I can automate lyrics inside of ProPresenter. And there's a whole list in the bottom left. The list is the exact same. And then if you need to see any of the MIDI map, that's all there and the DMX map, that's all there. So let's get down to media. This isn't a tab that I can say I use a whole lot, but it is interesting they renamed it from advanced to media and there's some different functions on here that you might need to utilize. So let's go to import. Import looks virtually the same across the two platforms. It, this is a really interesting tab because it gives you features, you're never gonna guess this, to import things into ProPresenter. So when you drag pictures into your media bin or videos into the media bin, the import, the default import page allows you to select the default behavior of these files when they come into ProPresenter. For example, if I wanted to bring in a bunch of pictures, I might want to change the foreground or background, whatever I'm trying to bring them into, to be scale and blur. If you remember back to update like 15, it introduced the scale and blur feature. That way, if you want to bring in some vertical images, but make them widescreen, it will show them vertically, but then it'll blur out the image, make it bigger and put it in the background. It makes it look really cool. So all that kind of stuff can be set up by default on this page. Let's get on to integrations. Integrations has been re-labeled to integrations from services, but basically it's where you can log in to all of the third-party applications, Planning Center, Song Select, Resi, Multitracks. Let's get on to Sync, and Sync is gonna be the page where you select how you want ProPresenter to sync to other folders. I don't really utilize this a lot, and I talk about that in other videos that I have, so maybe go check those out. Let's get on to groups, and if you ever need to set up new groups, and you know that you need to set them up in advance, I always seem to realize it when I'm setting up a song, so I have to do it from right-clicking on a slide and going to groups, but this is the better place to do it. You can click plus to add like 300 choruses or bridges if you need to. You never know. You can also set the key mappings from here, so if you want to be able to go to a verse or a bridge from a specific key, you can change that inside of here. Okay, the last thing on the list is slide labels. Labels is another new tab that used to be inside of the groups tab. So it's right here, it gives you a full page that you can click and select and drag and move things. And that's what's new in the ProPresenter settings tabs. Now let's take a look at the actual new features of ProPresenter 17. And we're gonna start with prop collections. We can now organize props. If I go to the props tab underneath of the multi-view that I have in my ProPresenter 7 template, and now you can click on default collection and now I can create new collections. So we can make a new one, call it name tags. And now I can go back out to the main collection and I've got these two props here that are name tags. So let's add to name tag. So it's going to take a copy of them and put them in name tags. Now I can go to name tags. So I think it's a good idea to do that. Have your default collection where all of your props are stored, but then if you want to be really specific on what you're looking for, put a copy in a specific folder. That way you can always scroll through, but then you can also organize and help yourself to find it quicker in the future. Okay, so the props collection really doesn't stop there. There are some new features that are really cool. So if I click on the prop and I put it up, you can see our service starts in, and let me go start a timer. So if I click that, there we go, back to the props tab. So you can see here, let me click out of the multi-view. Let's go back to our main output. You can see here that our service starts in 682 minutes. So what if I just want this to stay on the screen for a moment? They've given us some new features. We can now auto clear this prop. So we could do it after five seconds, 10, 30, 60, or add a custom number. So if I wanted to show this prop on this slide here, but only for five seconds, but let's say it's on the screen longer than that. So let's click to it and now click away. Okay, that was a terrible example actually, because let's use one of the name tags. Let's use my name tag. Let's do auto clear five seconds. We're gonna drag this to verse one and now I'm gonna click there. I'm gonna to click to the next one. It's gonna bring it up. This is Nathan Rob, everybody. And now it's gonna go away after five seconds and now I can cl continue clicking through the song. So I think it'll actually, if I click to it, it comes up two, and I can click through the song and then whenever five seconds happens, it's gonna go away. So great for like the message if you wanna have that be triggered but then automatically go away after 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 
however long you want to keep that name tag up on the screen for. Okay, so now I'm going to right click again. I will go ahead and go back to auto clear and change this to never. Both of these, I don't want them to ever go away. I just want to click on them and I want it to stay up and then I want to have to click off of it to, to get rid of it. So let's click on this little button here. This is the single prop mode. And this is kind of a cool thing you can enable per collection. So what I can do here is I'm going to click on this one and then I want to click on this one. But when I click on the second one, the first one goes away. How cool is that? And now we're not able to put two on the screen at the same time. If I turn this off, I can go ahead and put all of them on the screen. It just becomes a bundled mess. So now if I turn it on and I click on this one to turn it off, but then I click on it again, it'll say, nope, can only have one on at a time. Props are really fun. If I go to this uh, countdown presentation item, I'm gonna click plus and create a new slide. And I'm gonna right click on this slide, go to add actions, props, and now I can also set my actions to trigger this, the prop or to clear the prop. So we can have one side that triggers the prop and one slide that clears the prop. So that's kind of cool. We don't have to use the clear commands anymore. Actually, I don't really know what the difference is, but that's still kind of cool. You can also change how you view props by either putting it on the grid view or the list view, which lots of props stuff happening inside of this new ProPresenter 17 update. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is the TCP IP communications feature. This is a new way to harness ProPresenter's powerful API by enabling this on our network settings. Basically, this means that third-party systems have the ability to send and receive this TCP data to control ProPresenter. So some high-end ROS video switchers are able to utilize this and some different programs. And that's pretty much what's new in ProPresenter version 17. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you want to learn more about the launch of ProPresenter version 17, go ahead and check out my other video where I talk about the licensing and all of the behind the scenes subscription changes that are happening. Thanks so much for watching this video. See you next time. Bye.